So as I do this webinar today, please throw all your questions here into the um, Q&A section of the Hangout, and I'll answer as many of them as I can during the webinar. Um, any of those that I'm not able to get to in the webinar, or if I need to follow up with more information, um, I'll email people the answers to those questions following the webinar. So any question you have, I'll be sure to um, get an answer for you either right away or later today. So I'm going to get started because today is a shorter webinar, um, and I want to be able to get through everything um, in the next 20 minutes so that we have time for questions. <coughs> Excuse me. So today we're going to talk about using the OSF in a classroom. So using the OSF in the classroom, the OSF is um, a short abbreviation for the Open Science Framework, which is a open source and free web application for researchers to help um, promote sharing, transparency, and collaboration in scientific research. Um, using it in the classroom has many benefits. Um, one is that this is one way to introduce open science practices to students by getting them using the real tools that real scientists use in uh, their research. Um, it also allows you to take advantage of some of our functionality, including um, keeping track of uh, student activity and research activity using the notifications and recent activity widgets, as well as our, our commenting features on the OSF. Um, and using um, forking and templating to um, create standard formats for OSF projects. So I'll give you an example of um, a workflow you can use in your classroom to make the most of the OSF. Um, so you can see here I've already created a uh, model OSF in the classroom project. Um, I'm not going to go into the specific specifics of how to make this project. Um, if you want to learn how to start to make a project on the OSF, um, I would point you to OSF 101. Um, but in, in uh, the briefest um, overview, you would create a project, um, and you would, um, within that project that is where you will house all of your classroom projects, um, you create a component which you'll call your class project template or class project fork. And this is a component that will contain the structure that you would like your students to use um, to submit their schoolwork. So um, here I'll give you an example of the one that I've created. Um, nested within this project is this class project fork, which is where all of your students can um, see the, the structure that you would like um, for their projects to have. So you, you pick which sections you want them to break down their, their project into. Um, and you can also provide guidance in the wiki as to how to use the OSF and how you would like them to put, um, to store their files and what information to put in each section of their, um, of their class project. So you would customize this to whatever your needs were in your class. This is assuming this is some sort of research methods class, so there would be a section for the students to put in their methods, a section for them to put in their data, their analyses, and their final reports. So once you've decided um, what you want that format to be and you've created that component with the structure you like, um, you can use the wiki to give directions to the people in your class as to exactly how to use this OSF project to uh, be successful in the class. So in this example, I've given them step-by-step -step, um, examples as, as to um, what to do um, with this project um, for their own project. So um, that allows them to to get started right away and some information about who to contact if they need to um, ask questions. So once you've created this project, um, then what you need to do is add your students to it and add your research assistants and any other um, support staff that you have in your class 
uh, to the project. So you do that by clicking on contributors. Um, in this case, case my research um, assistant is Jolene. <clears throat> And I'm going to give her um, administrative permissions because I'd like her to be able to do anything that she needs to do on this project, including add other contributors, as in the other students in this project. So I'm going to add her as um, administrator on all the sections of the pro project so that she can um, have full permissions to every section in this project. And then I would also add here um, my students. So one of my students here, we're going to pretend uh, Courtney is a student. So I'd add her. And I would give her read and write permission. So this means she can't add contributors, but she can create content and links, which will be important. Um, I'll show you why in just a moment. <clears throat> so now you see from this project that um, I have me and my research um, support staff, and I also have um, my students added to this project. Um, so what the students are going to do, and as you can see, I put these directions here in the wiki, what, th what we're going to ask them to do is to fork this class project. So a fork is when you create a, um, a new project that has the same content and structure um, as this project. So forking is really useful in a classroom because me as the instructor can um, create exactly the structure I want and it's really simple for students to get started working within that structure. So the first thing you're going to do is go to either the class project fork here or here. This is the same place. This is just a link to um, this fork, and then they're going to go up to the duplicate section, and they're going to fork this project. So I'm going to check in on the questions right now, see if there's anybody that has. Oh, the screen is blurry. So I have two people here that say their screen is blurry, and then I have a plus five for that. Slides aren't readable. So I'm not sure really what I can do about that. It, the view that I'm seeing is um, different, I guess. It's, it's showing my screen um, clearly. So for Lily, Christina, and anyone else that's having a problem, some sort of technical problem, um, be sure that you have your uh, email address um, in the RSVP form, and I will forward you the video um, afterwards. So uh, apparently, OK, so Eric can see things clearly. I'm not sure why Lily and others aren't able to, and I really apologize for that. I'm not sure why. Um, I will forward you a video, and maybe if we need to reschedule a meeting with those that can't see this correctly, then we can do that at that point. I'm sorry I don't have a better um, answer for that right now. And, and for Ruth as well, make sure that your email address is in that RSVP form. Um, oh, and then, OK, so Lily has an update here that they can um, now read it when it's popped out in its own window. So for those of you that are having a hard time seeing the screen, um, try to view it as a popped out window, and that might help you. Thanks for that feedback, Lily. That's really helpful. So this is one of the realities of a live webinar. There's always like a few things um, that might not work perfectly. Uh, but hopefully, for those that um, are having troubles, they can get back to the video later or follow up with me, and we'll talk about this um, between um, you and me uh, later on. So that's my job, is to help you guys out. So 
if, if something is missing during this presentation, then be sure to get in touch with me um, and we'll sort it out. <clears throat> so um, our students have now been added to the higher level project and then they've gone into this fork of the class project and they've created a fork. So now they have their own project that is forked from this project that you've created. Um, so it contains all of this wiki information that you have, as well as this structure. So they can now rename it something that makes more sense for their project. So this is a research methods course, and these people are doing an analysis of cholera in Ireland. So this is their own project, um, and they're going to use the OSF to store all of the materials they're going to use when they create this research project in their class. Um, so when you created this project that they forked, um, you put all the information they need here in the wiki. So this will tell them um, what to put in each section of the project. So here it says, um, we want you to put your research question and hypothesis in this wiki um, and to add your instructors and TAs as course contributors. So your um, students will put in their research question and their hypothesis here. And any, any changes they make here will be tracked using version control so you can see the evolution of their study um, over time. And then they're also going to add the TA and, um, and instructor to this project. So your students are already on the way to making their own OSF project. Um, as they go into these different sections of the project, they're going to get more information, and this is the information that you put in that higher level project that they forked, about exactly what to put in each component. So here it says this is the methods component, this is where you're going to put your data, this is where you're going to put your, or this is where you're going to put your methods, this is where you're going to put your questionnaires, and all those sorts of things. Um, so each of these sections has its own information about what to store here. So um, the students can uh, work on their research, and then as they have um, new files that they've created, they can easily uh, take these files and put them in the appropriate place inside their uh, project. And so using the OSF in this way allows you, the instructor and the research um, personnel, to keep track of what's going on in this project. And, they can, and you can do that in different ways. Um, one way is by um, reviewing the recent activity of the project. So um, you can see here, uh, for every project, there is this section that tracks everything that's been done. It says who's done what. Um, and when it happened. So this is an easy way to keep track of the progress of your students' work. Um, you can also um, go into your settings and get notified for specific types of um, changes to the project. So for example, whenever a file is updated, so it's whenever someone puts up um, more data, you can choose whether or not you um, want to get um, notified by it, about that by email. Um, and then another um, thing you can do is um, um, leave comments for uh, your students and they can leave comments for you on um, the project itself. And um, using what we call the at mentions, 
you can um, ping that person with an email and a notification that alerts them to the fact that there's a message there for them. So you do this with commenting, and all you have to do is, is um, write a comment, say hi, Jolene. I just updated my data file. Please take a look. And let me know if you approve. So this will send a notification to Jolene to let her know that um, I would like her to take a look at something. Um, so this, this really helps with collaboration as well as communication, um, both between you and your students and between the students themselves as they collaborate on this work. Um, so once the, the um, students have finished um, their research and they've filled in all this information and updated their study, uh, the next step is for them to um, link their project back to this main project page. So they do this by clicking on Add Links and looking for this project through the link search. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Okay. And then you click the appropriate link and then add it. And remember that this particular, um, oh, did I link this to the wrong? Oh, sorry. We're going to link this here at the high level classroom project. So this is the project that um, all of the people in the class have been added to. Um, so this is where we want to add the link. So we're at a link um, analysis of cholera in Ireland. Sorry about that. This is where you would want to add the link. So adding the link here um, when this uh, project is public uh, when this um, project is public means that um, all of these um, students in your class are going to be able to see all of their um, other fellow students' research listed here. Um, and they can click and go to that project and, and see all the work that their uh, fellow students have done. Um, so let's check back on the questions here. Can you change the resolution of HD using the wheel? Okay. So I've had a suggestion to change the resolution. Oh, I see. Okay. So hopefully everybody's able to see the screen now. I hope that that's been resolved for everyone. Um, so here we have a question from Eric. Can you see all forks of a project even if students don't explicitly create a link to their own projects. Yes. So um, to see all the forks of a project, um, what you would do is, um, we'll go back to, so this is the project that everybody's going to fork. And you can see all of those forks up here. Um, well, you can see them in two ways. You can see them here by clicking on forks. And you'll see a list of all the forks that were created. Um, some of them people might make private, so you might not actually see the work that they've done. But if they're public or if you're added as a collaborator, which you should be on your students' projects, you'll actually be able to access all of these as well. Um, the other way to view those forks is by clicking on this um, duplicate button, and you can see um, all the forks that are created here. So there's two ways to view all those forks. Okay, so um, here's a great question from Norm. Is there a way for students to authenticate using their local email credential in lieu of creating an OSF account? So, um, yes, maybe. So, there is um, a service that we offer to institutions um, called OSF for Institutions. And for those um, universities that have signed on, um, we work to um, 
to integrate the single sign-on authentication systems that the universities are already using with um, the OSF. So in those particular institutions, students can use whatever sign-on they normally use, um, for example, to access library services and email services and things like that. Um, they can use that um, sign-on and that will also work for creating an OSF account with the same sign-on. But that's currently only for those institutions that um, have partnered with us to be part of this beta program for OSF for institutions. So that's, um, in most cases, uh, students will need to create their own account um, uh, on the OSF in order to use uh, the OSF. <clears throat> So this is another great question. Can students see each other's forks um, and can they control the privacy level? So um, every project has its own permission settings um, and every component with a, within the project has their own um, permission settings. So uh, let's take a look at this fork that we've created here. So this fork is currently private. Um, and so the way it's currently set up, um, even though we will have a, a record that this fork was created, it is currently only viewable by me and Jolene. Um, in order to make it viewable by the rest of the class, um, what the students can do is either add their, um, uh, the rest of their class as contributors to their project here, or they can make their uh, project public um, by clicking the Make Public button. So um, this is something that uh, each instructor will need to evaluate, um, you know, how reasonable it is to have um, these projects be public. Some institutions have regulations on these sorts of things about whether or not student research, um, you know, should be publicly available or not. Um, so that, that's up to you. Uh, probably in most cases, making it um, accessible to the rest of the students would be something that people would want. So in order to do that, they would need to add the rest of their uh, students here um, or share um, a link to their, to their classmates um, by creating a view-only link for their classmates. Um, and they can do that by clicking Add, selecting all, and you can say link for methods, classmates. And then by sharing this link, um, people in their, in their class would be able to, oops, that's not right. Let's try this again. There we go. People in their class will be able to view the project using that link. So um, there's a few different ways to share that information. Uh, and if it's able to be made public, it's super easy by um, just clicking the Make uh, Public button. Um, and when that is appropriate, it also allows those students to have something they can point to um, that shows uh, a little bit about their um, past experience with research, so they can include this link, um, this GUID to their project on their CV if they are able to make it um, public. Um, they're also able to um, take a look to see what the impact of their research is. So um, currently this is um, a very new project and there is not a lot of views on it, but if you created a project and then shared it with your teammates and shared it maybe with your department um, in a presentation or something, you could actually get a sense of who's visiting and looking at your research, uh, where, how they're finding it, um, and what parts of the project they're using. So it can be an introduction to um, you know, the, the communication of research and the sharing of research um, and research communication for these students as well as improving their CV um, if they're able to share uh, their projects publicly. <clears throat> so are there other questions at this point about how uh, this works? 
or this could work for, for you in your classroom? So all of the forks will have a link back to the main project page here. Um, and so this is the fork page, and then you can go back up to the um, classroom project. And so um, depending on um, what you're able to share or not share, you can include in this class project, um, once people have completed their projects, um, you can update the wiki um, with some sort of public-facing information about um, this research that they collaborated on together and share this <coughs> Um, <clears throat> excuse me, upper level part of the project. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I'm losing my voice. Um, and leave the rest of the project uh, private. So each section of the project can be um, controlled with its own permissions, with their own um, contributor settings and privacy settings. So if it's not appropriate to share the actual classroom work of your um, classroom, you can create sort of a summary project out of this higher level project that you can share that would be appropriate. <clears throat> so you still do have this sort of um, public advertisement of the great research that's going on with your students um, without sharing too much. Okay, so we've got a question here. I'm running a high school science investigation. My first investigation will focus on spiders. That's awesome. I'm thinking everyone will contribute data to the main project and then do the write-up analysis work in their own forks. That is a great way of using the OSF. So in this main um, project that you add everybody to, you can have a, um, a section of that where that data is, um, is stored. Um, and one thing you can do if you're going to be collaborating on a data set, um, for example, you have um, a data set here. <clears throat> um, people can collaboratively update this data set and it will track all of the versions of that data set over time. So, um, every time somebody wants to um, make a change to the data set because they've gone out and they found more spiders or they've measured more spiders, um, they click checkout. And this makes sure that the other people in the classroom don't, con don't create a conflicting version of your data set um, while they're editing it. So you check out the file. Um, you can edit it. This is if it's a CSV, you can create um, the edits straight within the OSF. They make the change that they want to make. You save it. Check the file back in so that other people can continue to update it. So now it's available for everybody to update again. And you can see here that this is now version two. So every version of the file will be available. You can track who made the changes and when. And this is a really great way to do that sort of collaborative data collection. Um, and make sure that everybody is um, able to access the data and update the data without causing conflicting um, versions of the data. So, okay, so everyone is responsible for creating a complete write-up, but I'd like students to, able, to be able to pull each other's sections, method analysis and conclusions, into their own work. What's the best way for students to borrow each other's components? So that's a really good question. Um, so linking would be one way to do that. So instead of um, when somebody creates their um, fork, instead of having a methods, if they're going to take the methods from someone else, they could add a link to that other group's methods um, section. and have that as part of their method section. So that's one way that they could do it. Um, uh, and I think that that could work pretty well because it's pretty straightforward. And then instead of having their own methods, they would link to 
the method section here. Um, if you would like to for them to build upon it, then forking might be a better way. But if you're thinking that one group will write the methods and another group will write the analysis, then um, linking allows people to, to um, allow a, a, a living project to happen but still um, be part of another project. Um, so hopefully that answers those questions. Um, if you want more um, information on using the OSF in your classroom, or if you are interested in learning how to actually create one of these model classroom projects, um, or some advice on how to structure this, uh, get in touch with me at contact at cos.io, <clears throat> and I'll be happy to answer any further questions that you have. Um, I'll stay for just a few moments. Um, I've covered all that I need to cover at this point, but if you guys have a last minute question, I can answer a quick one. Um, otherwise, thanks so much for joining, and um, I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks to you, too. Great, thanks everybody. Um, I don't see any more questions right now and I'm glad that Lily was actually able to see at the end. Um, so hopefully everyone was able to see the video um, by the end of it. And um, I will be emailing out the um, link to the video on YouTube for those that want to either share it or um, watch it again for to see parts that they might have missed. Great. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.